Good day, beloved in Christ. Welcome to prayer the first Friday of Lent, February the 19th. Let's take a deep breath as we begin with the penitential rite. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let us confess our sins against God, ourselves, and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips together, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of mercy and compassion. O come, let us worship. Please sing with me the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 31 is our psalm today. The psalmist models for us taking refuge in the Lord and crying out to the Lord uh, from a place of whatever burdens and struggles and afflictions we may be experiencing and concludes with the wonderful advice, Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. In verse 6, there's a bit of an off-putting statement of hatred of those who worship other gods and a bit of a self-satisfied spirit and sentiment, it seems like, on the behalf of the psalmist. These are not really to be emulated. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols, and I put my trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy, for you have seen my affliction, you know my distress. You have not shut me up in the power of the enemy, you have set my feet in an open place. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors. 
a dismay to those of my acquaintance, and when they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, You are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. Lord, let me not be ashamed for having called upon you. Rather, let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be silenced which speak against the righteous, haughtily, disdainfully, and with contempt. How great is your goodness, O Lord, which you have laid up for those who revere you, which you have done in the sight of all for those who put their trust in you. You hide them in the covert of your presence from those who slander them. You keep them in your shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me the wonders of his love in a besieged city. Yet I said in my alarm, I have been cut off from the sight of your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the sound of my entreaty when I cried out to you. Love the Lord, all you who worship him. The Lord protects the faithful, but repays to the full those who act haughtily. Be strong, and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Let us pray. Helper of the helpless, comfort of the afflicted, may your servants who stand in the midst of evil find strength in the knowledge of your presence, and praise you for the wonders of your love, through Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In our reading from Titus chapter 2, we hear of uh, Paul's encouragement to Titus to hold true to sound doctrine. But you must teach what agrees with sound doctrine. Instruct older men to be sober, sensible, and self-controlled, to be sound in their faith, love, and endurance. In the same way, instruct the older women to behave as women should who live a holy life. They must not be slanderers or slaves to wine. They must teach what is good in order to train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be good housewives who submit themselves to their husbands so that no one will speak evil of the message that comes from God. In the same way, urge the young men to be self-controlled. In all things, you yourself must be an example of good behavior. Be sincere and serious in your teaching. Use sound words that cannot be criticized so that your enemies may be put to shame by not having anything bad to say about us. Slaves are to submit themselves to their masters and please them in all things. They must not talk back to them or steal from them. Instead, they must show that they are always good and faithful, so as to bring credit to the teaching of our God our Savior in all they do. For God has revealed His grace for the salvation of all humankind. That grace instructs us to give up ungodly living and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled upright and godly lives in this world as we wait for the blessed day we hope for when the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will appear. He gave himself for us to rescue us from all wickedness and to make us a pure people who belong to him alone and are eager to do good. Teach these things and use your full authority as you encourage and rebuke your hearers. Let none of them look down on you. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Paul's teaching to Titus here is clearly not to upset the apple cart of culture, of tradition, of the way that things are in the Cretan society in which Titus is bringing and living out the good news. I think for Paul, the most important thing is to pave the way for the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins, and the call to righteous living. In addition, 
Paul sensed that the return of Christ was imminent, was coming closely, was coming quickly, meant let's get the message out there as quickly as possible and cause as little controversy as necessary to proclaim the mercy of God in Jesus Christ. This may not be the full message for the long haul when culture does need to be challenged and transformed. There's a real tension that the church has had to live for 2,000 years. How to live in and participate in local culture without making too many waves so as to obscure the gospel, and yet to live and proclaim prophetically God's gracious call to love one another, to serve one another, to confront injustice, regardless of the unjust practices of the dominant culture. These tensions continue in the life of the contemporary church and continue to challenge preachers of this day to be attractive and winsome and non-confrontational and yet also to be prophetic and to say the truth as the truth needs to be said and speak truth to power. May the Lord help us together to live in the world but not of the world. Amen. Let us bring to the Father our prayers of intercession through Christ, who gave himself for the life of the world. For the forgiveness of the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them in the mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for Christian people, that through the suffering of disunity there may grow a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who make laws, interpret them, and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, for peace between different ethnicities and religions in the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement. For those who are weighed down with hardship, failure, or sorrow, and feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who are in need of your healing grace this day, we pray for Jamal, for Ricardo and Irene, for Rose and Jerry, for Jeannie and Rob, for Angela, Laura, for Shirley, Michael, for Clement and Lydia, for Sammy and Maria. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Gathering our prayers together, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the peace of God, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all yours this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day. TGIF.